Hello and welcome everyone here to another live stream on Mikey's Flight Deck. I don't know if YouTube has uh, changed here some settings. I was a little bit nervous now because I didn't see any previews of the stream. But I hope now everything is okay and working. So, ah, yeah, and there comes there comes the advice from the wife that everything is working. So, hello again. Nice to have you all here. We have something to do now. We want to make knobs. And I think um, the word knobs is... Uh, has uh, several meanings in in English. I I know when I wanted to um, release my first not making video, then uh, two times uh, YouTube um, yeah didn't uh, get this video live uh, because of the word knobs. Okay, now uh, the monetarization is away. <laughs> so Kurt Nielsen, hello. Good evening, and we have the Contour Gestaltung here. Nice evening to you too. So, what do we have, or I, what have I planned for this evening? Let's have a look here. There it is, the pedestal or the image of the pedestal I'm using um, many times here. Um, to get some inspirations. When we look down here, we have the flight deck door knob down here on the bottom right. This is one of the knobs I want to design today, this evening. And when there is time left, and I hope there will be some time left, uh, I will make this gain knob here. So uh, a small knob and I think there I can show again uh, some techniques um, which can be useful for many other knobs here, especially uh, this um, yeah, small, smaller getting knob here at the top and all these engraving around here. Yes, this is what I want to do now. So let's switch over to Fusion. And let get myself in the other corner. I think this is better when I'm working in Fusion. Paraclet, hello. Nice to have you here. Good evening. Again, if anyone of you has any questions, um, then just write them into the chat especially when I'm doing something that you didn't un don't understand um, or I did something too fast and uh, should uh, explain something again, then just write it in the, in the chat and we can make this clear. So again, I'm using uh, Fusion 360. There are many other uh, programs uh, you can use to model your knobs as long as you can produce a 3D file later of it. That's all. I have seen uh, one guy making knobs uh, in 2D and um, routing them out on the CNC router from wood. It's also possible, Yeah, but I think here um, the 3D way is uh, the most uh, common for anyone here. So I will get the image over here so that I can see it. Here. Um, when we model something like this doorknob, then it is more than uh, just a cylinder and you have to model something with a cylinder. It's a little bit more complicated. And the first thing is, how big is this? Um, how is it look, does it look like from uh, different angles? And there is something, a website uh, I have found and I want to show this to you. Uh, 
this is the the website i will give the the link now into the chat so that you can save it there it is or for all of you who are watching this video later i will write it down into the video description then so this website here um, has many knobs and um, measurements of all these knobs and now we can search for this door knob i think we can find this something here and where do we have it i think here oh what the door knob the one uh, that we don't have here i'm i'm not uh, sure about this uh yes but we have it here so um there are different models i think they are looking all the same um i have looked uh, to these knobs um, before uh, they uh, the only difference is uh, the size um, of the base here of these knobs and i want to take this one here so when you are here you have the um, yeah, naming of this knob and, and the naming can be um, your um, edited uh, with some additional uh, things and these things we want to give him here if the knob is illuminated i th um, think yes it is illuminated it doesn't make any difference here for my modeling now the shaft size i think i'm using this this here the shaft size is also not relevant for me because I most most of the times I'm using six millimeter shafts and uh, then I will model a six millimeter hole into um, the knob. So the color again, yeah, let's say gray from Boeing and the markings, black border, white line. Yeah. And then you go here to choose this style. So, and here we find a drawing of this knob and this drawing is something we will uh, use later let's have a look if i have already done this the saving if not i have to do this now there we no this isn't the the knob okay so i have to save this here can i do this oh yes so here we have it and let's can we just download it and it's a pdf uh, so we make a screenshot of it and save it and the saving is important because we will use this later in fusion so I'm saving this knob here. Let's say door knob. And we will save it in this live stream folder here. Where it is? There. Door knob. Okay, back to fusion. So why have we done this because we want to make a canvas here in fusion i don't know if you have already worked with canvas let's have a look here it's it's um, that you place the image that we have saved now here in your fusion uh, modeling environment so how can we do it we say here insert and canvas and we will insert this from the computer and we go to the folder where we have saved this knob image uh, stream here the door knob now we have to say on which um, plane we want to insert this and i will choose the x z axis first 
and there we can see it has already inserted it. Yeah, I think this is okay for the beginning, but now it is inserted in your yeah, the size where uh, how this image is, but we want to um, be this image in the exact size uh, like the knob is. And to do this, we have to calibrate this canvas now first. And but with which measurement we want to do this. So we have to uh, take a look again to the website here. Um, let's say this measurement A. I don't know if you can see this here. Yeah, the measurement A, the width of the button. Uh, down here, we have uh, written down what this measurement A means. 0.94 inches. All the measurements here are in inches that you have to keep in mind. I'm modeling in uh, millimeters, um, but yeah, so I have to calculate this here and I can do this. So 0.94 inches, 23.8. Let's keep the simple, let's say um, 24 millimeters. So keep this in mind. So we go to the canvas and make a right click and say calibrate. And we should do the calibration in a plain view here. I will also switch the camera to autographic. So, and now we zoom in here to a 1.94 I click one point and click another point. And now it is asking me um, how long the distance between these two points is. And you can see this here, or I can see it, um, 2.5 millimeters. This is way too small. So uh, two for 24 millimeters. Enter, and now it has scaled up the image to the size that we need. Oh, and now we can place, uh, no, we can't, can we? Ah, yeah. Edit canvas, and then we can place the canvas where we need it. I think I will do is somewhere here so that it sits somewhere on the X axis and the Z axis in the middle. I think this will make things easier. Yes. So this is the first canvas we uh, insert. Now we have the, well, let's say it, yeah, the front view of the knob. Now we have to insert another view, the side view and the top view. We do it uh, in the same way. We say insert canvas from my computer and the doorknob. And let's start with the top view on the X, Y axis. There we are. Down there we have it. I will, yes, I will switch out this canvas for a moment. So we go to top and yeah, autographic view we are still in. And now again, we calibrate it. Right click, calibrate. Um, we use now the same distance here, even uh, we are in the top view, but we can still use this here. So 24 millimeters. There we are. And now when I reactivate the other view, uh, there it is. Okay. Okay. We don't see it, um, but I know where I want to have this canvas um, aligned. So again, edit canvas. So we are in the top view. So we want to place this top view 
here. So now it is um, it has the z-axis in the middle and the x-axis going through it and the y-axis in the other direction. So this is a top view. Yes. And last but not least, the side view. Invert canvas. Donor and now the Z Y axis. And you know the, the game. Right click and calibrate. Tuck, tuck, and 24 millimeters. And now align it. There on the right, we have the side view. And we place the side view here. Yeah. Something like this. So now we are ready to go with the modeling. Uh, camera to perspective. Yeah. Oh, there they are, all the canvases in place. And we should save the file. Uh, where do I want to save it? Cockpit knobs. This is the door knob. Yeah, door. Revo Truck Simulator. Hello. Good evening. Nice to have you here. So, yeah, where do we start? I think the best would be uh, with this uh, round base. Well, let's get this image to here. Where do we have it? This round base down here. I think we will start with this. So what can be the height of this base? We take a look at our measurements. So the, the base height here, I think it is uh, the number D here, the measurement D. And D is 0.16 inches. So 0.16, what is this? Four millimeters. Okay. We take this. So four millimeters. So we have now um, here to do a circle of uh, or a cylinder of 24 millimeters uh, diameter and four millimeters height. And we will do this in the here, yeah, here on the in the nearly top view. Uh, where we had cylinder there on the x y axis. Let's get rid of the canvases for this time. So and starting the cylinder, twenty four millimeters. and a height of four millimeters. There it is. I hope this works. Here. And when we have a look to at the front with camera switch to autographic, then you can see our cylinder is uh, nearly perfectly meeting, um, hitting this drawing. The Indian Aviator. Hello and good evening. Nice to have you here. Take take something to drink, relax, and watch me making knobs. So now uh, we will make this yeah this this middle thing how 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 you can call this here this here. I think uh, we will make it with a drawing, with a drawing from the top view. So 
let's get uh, rid of the, the first body. Yeah. I think this can be um, a good example for mirroring everything. So just modeling one quarter of it and then mirroring everything. Let's try this. Um, we will make it on top of this here, I think, or uh, let's have a look at the picture again. Mm, no, I think, no, uh, this goes down to the bottom. We will uh, model this directly on the XY plane. So new sketch on the, no, I'm lost there. Okay. And let's start with a line, I think. Yeah. One thing here, just some rough lines. And here, finished. So now we fine tune the lines. No, can we fine tune? meeting the, uh, it's hitting the, the drawing already nice. So now comes, I think already the fun part, mirroring. Uh, make a mirroring of this object and this object. Ah, and we need a mirroring line, but maybe we can choose this from the origin uh, and this is the oh, which is it the y and z axis here we have the y and z axis yep and here you can see it has already mirrored Okay, finished. And now we do again a mirroring. Uh, not of this here. So eight objects, Y eight should only be four. One, two, three, four. Don't know why he has chosen eight. And the mirroring this time is the X, Z axis. There it is. And now we can already make an extrusion. Yeah, I, I think um, we can uh, also wait with the uh, with the mirroring and make the mirroring later. Ah, come on. Okay, just just my thinkings. Um, later, we will have to add roundings here in these corners. And when I concentrate just on this uh, top left quarter, then I can make this drawing and the extrusion just of this quarter, make this rounding here and then making all the mirroring that I have done right now. And then all the edges here are mirrored. So uh, something that I should uh, say in the beginning, I'm not showing the way of doing uh, knobs. Most of the times so I'm completely lost here. Uh, I'm showing my way. And maybe you can see how uh, a model is developing um, during the time you're modeling it. Many times uh, when I'm modeling uh, something, I throw it completely away and start again 
later because I have learned many things and, and uh, came uh, over some problems during the modeling time and then uh, the uh, modeling timeline here in Fusion is completely a complete mess and then yeah most of the times it's better to start it from the beginning again. So just saying I'm not a pro here. So how much uh, have we to extrude it? Uh, this should be here the B value and B is 0.62 inches. 0.62 inches, 15.7 millimeters. So we will make an extrusion 15.7. There we are. So and when we get rid of the canvas and the body oh, here, we nearly have a finished doorknob. Bah. <laughs> so now we will later um, combine these two bodies. Yeah. So now the roundings. Is something said about these roundings here? I don't see anything here. No. Okay. And then uh, we will just eyeball them. Here you can see the, the image. Can we make it bigger? Yeah. Zip. There. Yeah. Just some roundings. We'll have a look um, to the to the drawing later to the canvas. So reactivate the canvas and have a look. Uh, I think from the top. Yeah, we will now make the roundings and uh, we will, uh, uh, I will uh, select the edges. So fill it and the edges. One, two, three and four and now going to the top view there oh, top view there we are and now make the rounding so that it meets the drawing wow. 1.2 millimeter seems meeting it good. Zip. There we are. And now the side roundings. So the next fillet one and two and again to the top view And a little rounding here. Three millimeters looks good. So we get rid of the canvas again and have a look here. Yes, this is looking more like this knob already. And what do we have to do? some roundings on the top I think I thought this this knob uh, could be more difficult but it isn't okay so a little bit rounding on the top this year sure how much um, let's have a look to the canvas and the front view oh here we have something uh, funny you can see um, the drawing doesn't match uh, with the values we have looked up on the website this can be a reason um, that they use 
the same drawing for different button types, which are similar. Um, yes. Now we have to make a decision. Uh, should we trust the written values or should we trust the drawing here? I think uh, I have now done, um, yeah, most of the time um, after the, the values. And, and now I think this isn't a problem here. Okay. Yeah, um, but why uh, was I here? Because of the rounding. Okay, now we have to make the rounding so that it meets this rounding here some way two millimeters i think two millimeters is a little bit too much yeah 1.5 let's try this okay again get rid of the canvas Here. And now some roundings here. And I think I will do the roundings before combining uh, these two. Maybe this uh, can be easier for fusion. So here a small rounding. Oh, that's too much. I think this is way too much. It's only a small rounding. I think I've done something 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Oh, let's, let's try it with 0.4 millimeters on the top. And 0.2 on the bottom. It's always good to have a um, small rounding on the bottom as well, even if you don't see the bottom most of the times, but um, it makes it much easier, uh, especially when you resin print this button. I know it's not the best way to um, align all the buttons flat on your resin print uh, bed, but I think for uh, a knob like this here, where no overhangs are there, um, this is just a, a good solution. Uh, if it is not too big, then you can uh, loosen it from the bed uh, good. But if there are overhangs on the button, uh, then you should align it 45 degree angled on your print bed when you use a resin printer. If you use a filament printer, again, it's different. So these are the roundings. Here, there we have it already. I don't know if this rounding here on the top is a little bit too much. Let's have a look on the picture again. And I think this rounding here is not as much as we have done. And here the same. Yeah, I think we will make this rounding a little bit smaller. And we can do this in Fusion. Just find the rounding. Um, I, I hope you can see this. Uh, my mouse is on the on the bottom here in the timeline. And you can see when I'm going over um, here over the rounding, then you can see um, yeah, which rounding uh, is uh, which rounding it is that you are editing here. So we double click it here and now we can make an, a different rounding. One millimeter. So I think one millimeter looks a little bit more like the picture. So Tibor, hello. 
Greetings to Angry. Nice to have you here. And Indian Aviator. The top is round is big. What do you mean? You mean it is as big? I think, uh, yeah, I think this, this is okay, I hope. Sure. What a button, uh, a knob. So now we have to combine these, these two, mark them and say combine, join. I will keep the tool, so the tool, uh, one of these um, bodies here, uh, just for, just in case if I want to change something again. So let's delete this here. Draw. And there it is combined. I think we are already finished. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected that uh, we are finished so fast. Okay. Now a little bit of color. Oh, we have to do the um, set screw holes and the shaft hole. Okay. Uh, my favorite. It's always good when you are using um, some colors um, again in uh, uh, different models, then to save them as your favorite. And I have uh, saved this RAL 7047. And this is the, the RAL code I'm using for all the knobs in my cockpit. So onto this button. There we have color. Okay. And now um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, modeling these stripes here, these uh, black and white stripes. You can do this if you want to. Um, I think, yes, I, I, I can show you how I would do this uh, if I need them. Um, but I am painting my buttons and so I'm masking um, the button out with some uh, masking tape and then uh, airbrushing it. And so I don't need uh, these markings as screws in my model. When you are 3D printing this knob and you need this as a groove uh, because you want to fill it with wax, uh, for example, then you have to model them. How would I model them if I would do this? Um, I think I would do a sketch just here uh, to show it for you. Uh, I would do a sketch on the... Would I do a sketch? Mm, there are different ways. Um, so a sketch is one way uh, that you say... something like just just uh, just rough so a, a rectangle and it has a size inside these uh, lines most of the times have a size of one millimeter like this and then Cutting away these, and then we have to extend them here. Um, uh, we'll do it in a different way. Here, the extend tool. cut this small thing out here. Finish the sketch. Yeah, I'd, um, I don't uh, do more sketches here now uh, because this rounding is could be a little bit complicated. There are tools here in Fusion. I think if you would do this, um, I think it could be the uh, which tool would you use? 
uh, no, I don't know. It would uh, take too long now. Um, you can, what's the word? Um, how, how is the word? Um, what, what is here? Uh, you can project, that's it. You can project um, a drawing onto a round curve and I think something like this is what I would do here uh, to do the line exactly following the surrounding here. So, but then you would just do an, an ex a negative extrusion, 0.2 millimeters, there you are. And then you go on with this technique down uh, here to the bottom and then you can fill this groove with Vex, for example. Uh, but then you still have to think, what do you do with this middle here? Then you will would, could let it um, gray or you can paint it first white. I think this, this can work. And after this um, filling in, filling this thing here with uh, wax. But the white color you use uh, should resist um, your wiping when you wipe away the overstanding wax. So, but we don't want to do this. Um, I just delete them here. I just need the button, uh, the knob plain as it is. So now the shaft hole. Let's have a look at the bottom. Oh, by the way, I see here. Uh, we have done the rounding here, but uh, there is no rounding here. Ooh. We have to do this too. This and the back. 0.2 millimeters. Ah, better. So, and now to the bottom. Um, two ways to do this. First of, uh, first way would be the hole tool. You can just say here, and then align the hole to the center, and yeah. You can see it, um, a flat flat hole, and then you can make it any depth you need it, and also the the width uh, can be edited six millimeters in. Uh, that's not the width, that's the height here. Six millimeter, maybe ten millimeter height. So, and there we already have the hole. I say this is one option because this option can be used um, if you need round shafts. Um, there can be the there can be situations where you need this D uh, shaped shafts, and these shafts you can't do with the whole tool. Then you would uh, have to create a sketch. Uh, on the bottom and uh, yeah with any uh, shape you need and then extrude it into uh, the knob here here by the way this is um, the method i'm using most of the times not because i'm uh, having d shapes shaft uh, very often here but i have more options um, to edit a, a sketch later than um, a drilling here. Well, when I reactivate the whole tool, I can still um, yeah, edit the depth or the width. Yeah, but I think many times um, with a sketch, uh, I have some more options here to, yeah, to align it so, but I think for now, this should be good enough. Let's have a look at the depths again. I will make it a little bit deeper. 
12 millimeters. Yeah. And uh, I have to, I will make it a little bit bigger, not much, not directly six millimeters, but 6.2 or one, and let's say one. So it fits better over my shaft, whatever shaft I'm, I'm using later. So what have we here in the T-bore? Rotate small rectangle parallel to the radius to cut the parallel lines. Yes, um, yeah, again, here when we are here um, to make these grooves, you know, when, when you want to model um, the grooves here in the bottom, yeah, rotate it parallel to the radius. Yeah, I think uh, then, then you have the radius of this, of this corner here, make a rectangle and then rotate it around. Yeah, I have to. Uh, make more uh, tryouts here in Fusion. So most of the times I'm completely lo lost here. Yeah, and Indian Aviator, what should be a uh, clearance of the hole to the shaft? Yeah, uh, right, what what I said. Um, I think um, you have to measure uh, your shaft first. Um, if there uh, comes um, in your measurement that the shaft already doesn't have the exact six millimeters, then I, th I think I have done um, other knobs uh, with no clearance. Let's have a look here at the last knob I have done here, this type one knob there. Let's have a look uh, what diameter we have here. 6.2, okay. So, uh, yeah, and 0.2 millimeters, uh, I remember, is also uh, the clearance I'm using for, yeah, when, when I have here these annunciators uh, on the overhead panel to let them slide into their holes. Yeah. So we can edit this hole again and say 6.2 two millimeters. There we are. And now the holes for the set screws. Let's have a look to our drawing here. These set, so, uh, these set screws are sitting here in this side. There you can see them. They have, there are two of them and I can yeah, recommend you to uh, use two set screws in a knob. My first knobs that I did had only one set screw. Uh, and then the knob stays in place and holds good um, on the shaft. But the force uh, force it, it um, a little bit yeah, in, in one direction and it can happen that uh, the yeah the, the sitting isn't tight enough the fitting isn't tight enough um, and it can yeah slide through when you are rotating the knob to the end stop and then um, a little bit too far or if the knob is, uh, not the knob, the shaft is really short and you can reach the shaft only at the most top of it. And then one screw can produce enough uh, pressure to hold your knob uh, on the shaft. So use two screws and then you have uh, divided the force evenly. So we will model these here. And where does it sit? Let's have a look over here. I think E is um, the distance of this screw here. We have 0 
inches. 7.8 million liters. Yeah. Yeah, that can be can be good. Um I have to mention something about set screws. If you can try to set the set screws as deep as you can, as near as the bottom as you can. Because uh, I had the problem on my overhead panel um, with very short shafts or shafts really sticking out um, of the overhead, not much. Then you can run into problems uh, when your set screw is up here and it can't reach the shaft. Or what I said before, if it reaches the shaft, but just at its top, then it can produce enough uh, pressure to hold the knob in place. So we will have a look where these 7.8 millimeters are here in our model. And if it is good, then it can stay there. If not, I will uh, lower it. Yes, and, and we have to align it so that it um, yeah, meets the center of this hole here. Uh, how we will make this with another cylinder, I think. Not with a sketch, with a cylinder. So we will make a cylinder and we will do it here on the YZ plane. So get rid of the body for a moment. Yeah, on the right. Here, we will stay on the, the Y, so, and what, di yeah, what, what diameter uh, should we t um, choose? I'm using three millimeter set screws. And you can look up in the web uh, how, um, which diameter you need as pre-drill and for three millimeter machine screws, I have to use 2.5 millimeter um, as, uh, as a pilot hole. And then I can cut in a thread. You can also model the thread here and print it. I have made, a, um, I have, uh, Take the decision that I just uh, I only model the the pilot hole and then cut the uh, thread in with uh, with hardware, and this has worked very good all the time. So I don't come out with a bad printed uh, thread. The thread is always perfect here and it holds. So 2.5 millimeters. So have a look at the set screws that you are using or you want to use or you have there in your shop. If you have four millimeter set screws, then you need another uh, diameter. So 2.5 and a length. Length doesn't matter because we will cut this. Um, just use it to cut through here. So operation cut, no, not, uh, not now, later. We make a new body. So there is our cylinder. And now it should come out somewhere here in this, in this plane. Uh, but before we do this, we will um, align it on the right height that we need. So, uh, yeah, we should have modeled it in the, in the center, then it could be easier, I think, to move it. Uh, or can we, can we move it to special coordinates? No, we can't. 
und ah, okay. Hmm. We will do it again. This is what I'm talking about. Something you have to do it again, just just to make it easier. So again, um, the Z display here, there. 2.5 and up here. So no cutting, new body. Okay, so and now we will move it up 7.8 millimeters. There we are. And I already see this is too high for me, I think. Um, I'm looking over to my overhead here, but I don't have a free uh, shaft where I could measure it. No, this is not the place where I will set the set screw. Um, can't I just ah, reverse it there? So move it. So what do we have here? Five. No, five is not is really too deep. Yeah, six. And we have to keep in mind um, the hole will get will become um, bigger by 0.5 millimeters. But I think this this looks good here. Oh, let's say 6.5. Okay, so to have the clearance, there I will place it. Oh, and now it uh, should be more in this. Um, plane here, so we have to rotate it. We know it is meeting the, the center here and we are rotating it now. And the pivot point, uh, so the, um, the axis, so the axis will be the z-axis. And now we can rotate it. So, and where do we want to rotate it? Well, let's have a look where it comes out here. So that it is nearly in the middle, I think. Or not too much, so uh, that the hole isn't too long here on the side. Yeah. So let's have an easy value. Let's say minus 35 degrees, like this. Okay, and now we have, to have the we need the second hole, and we know the two holes have 90 degrees to each other. So we just select this body, use the move tool, rotating it, create a copy this time. Um, the axis again is the z axis, and we rotate it minus 90 degrees. There. And now the magic begins. We combine again. So the target body is our knob here, and the tools are these two here, and we don't do a join but a cut. Keep tools. Come on, keep the tools. So, and there we are with perfectly aligned holes. Before I modeled my knobs here um, and resin printed them, uh, I have made uh, knobs that are um, made made from resin but uh, from a mold and I have printed out only one or a few knobs uh, with my filament printer 
and then fine-tuned them, sanded them, uh, and used filler so that it has a really cool and flat surface and then made silicon molds out of them. And in these molds I have drilled the holes by hand and I remember it was always um, tricky um, first of all to align this shaft hole here in the middle and uh, then to drill this side hole here so that it meets uh, the center or the direction is near the center yeah resin printing these knobs out makes it really easy the knob and the knob and the holes come out good and i only have to uh, cut in a thread yeah. so i think there we have the doorknob finished saving here so and now we will go on to the next next uh, knob after a short break from me just a moment and there we are again a little cold today um not here but um the day out out a day in the garden today and now I'm really finished, even physically. <laughs> okay, but we have to go on. This was the flight deck door. We are now moving over to this gain knob here. So, and the techniques I want to show here at the gain knob, you can use. Um, again um, with many other knobs too especially these groovings here and the smaller diameter at the top in, um, compared to the bottom here so you can see these knobs here really this uh, nearly the same techniques so the gain knob uh, i haven't looked uh, for this for the drawings of these these knobs here but uh, we have to search for them so let's have a look here which knob can be similar to this here i think this one here the re large series is looking really like it here here Let's compare it to the image here. I think this one here looks more like like the gain knob. Yeah. So illuminated shaft doesn't matter, color doesn't matter at well. And this can happen. Yeah, no drawing available. Okay. And yeah, this makes it uh, difficult because we don't know uh, what these values mean, A, B, C, without a drawing. Um, let's save these drawings uh, with a screenshot. And have a look if uh, some other knob has a drawing where we can see what these numbers mean just uh, clicking here through to get to the image mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no drawing as well any other knob here has a an image this one here, maybe. No. 
Okay, let's compare it to the image we have used before. So how can I show this to you? Yeah, something like this. I hope you can see this good enough. If not, I'm, I'm reading the values. So A was in this knob, the diameter here. And I think this can be here too, but I think that's too big. Again, um, 0.88. 22 millimeters. I don't think uh, this knob is as big. Uh, let's let's try a, a different um, attempt. So let's compare it to this knob here. This knob I have modeled already, and I think just when I look. Uh, at the at these two knobs here, then I would say the bottom diameter of this knob is a little bit smaller than this one. Maybe maybe you would uh, agree with me here. And let's open the model of this knob here and have a look which uh, values I have used there. This is the dual rotary encoder top. Uh, let's measure it. Or um, yeah, measuring or have a look at the drawing. Radius 8, 16 millimeters. Yeah, I think I remember this, 16 millimeters. Yeah, let's have a look at the, the sketch here, maybe. Yeah, 16 millimeter, this is the bottom. And just to see the top sketch, 14.5, okay. So 16 millimeters was the diameter of this knob here. And so I think for this one, poof, 14 maybe, I think 14 can be good. Just, just eyeballing it. Um, just keep in mind, we're building a simulator uh, and not the real, the real thing really near the real thing but um, yeah at the end it doesn't matter if your knob uh, is one millimeter bigger than the original one and on top I'm designing all the panels here as well and when I now say my uh, diameter is 40 millimeters then I design uh, and align these texts that a 14 millimeter knob can fit in there. That's it. Okay, 40 millimeter bottom diameter. Uh, back to Fusion and a new file, a new design. And this time we start with a sketch, a sketch on the X, Y plane a circle in the middle and we say 14 millimeters. And this is all this uh, sketch needs. Finished. And now we will um, have to create another sketch and again have a look at our screenshot we have taken before. Uh, which is the height of this? Oh, come on. Um, let's forget all this uh, and again, eyeballing it. And again, I would say the height of this uh, knob here comes near the height of the top knob of 
this uh, dual rotary encoder knobs here. Yeah, and let's have a look. What have I used there? Mm, here. 13.5 millimeters. Yeah, let's do it. 13.5. Um, so back to our file here and we will uh, make this sketch on a 13.5 millimeter um, distance um, construction plane. And for this, we use an offset plane, an offset plane of the uh, X, Y axis in that 13.5, there it is. Now we have a construction plane where we can place sketches on. There. And this will be uh, a little bit smaller than the circle now. Um, you have maybe you have seen this uh, on the dual rotary encoded top knob um, 16 millimeter bottom diameter and 14.5 top diameter so uh, 1 1.5 less um, let's try this here too uh, so for if you don't want to calculate it huh, we can say um, 14 minus 1.5 and we come out with 12.5. Not that I couldn't uh, calculate this, um, but just to show it to you. <laughs> Broken brain guy. Good evening. Nice to have you here. So this is already, this is all we need for the sketch here. So now we have two circles different size. And now we create a loft. And a loft, you can see this here in the preview, a loft takes two shapes and tries to create um, yeah, um, a wall between them, a skin, I would say, a skin between them. The profile there and there. There are many other options. Uh, we now just ha uh, have um, selected two profiles. You can, you see this here, a rail, um, I think a way how this skin should be um, generated here. But here we just need the basics. That's it. Yeah. I think you can also do this with an extrusion. Let's just let's try this. Um, extrusion, uh, thirteen point five millimeters, and you can yeah you can uh, insert a taper angle. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, here minus five degrees uh, and then you come out with a with the same result uh, minus three degrees for example if you know the degrees that it uh, should be tapered so. okay yep but this time we will do this with a loft So uh, there we are already. What do we need? You know, some some roundings later, or even now already. Hmm? So let's make some uh, fillets here. Mm. Oh, not too much. Point five. Let's have a look again here. Mm. 
No, it's a little bit rounder, I think. Uh, 0.8, I think something like this here, 0.8. And another rounding on the top, uh, on the bottom, again, um, oh, there I have done a mistake, so. Oop, edit here, down the bottom, 0.2. So here we have our roundings and now we have to insert the grooves around here. So these grooves seem um, not to go through the top here. At this uh, dual rotary top knob you can see these uh, grooves going out um, of this knob here, but these don't. Uh, so we have to keep this in mind. We will now use cylinders again to make cutouts here. So we will create the cylinder. Um, let's hide the body for this purpose. And we will there's a cylinder here on the x, y plane. So, and yeah, how can we start? Let's let's start with two point five. No, that's too big. I think two millimeter cylinder. Oh, let's try it. And the height. We have a total height of thirteen point. Uh, five I think and so let's let's try with ten so now we make fillets here and here and one millimeter radius so that we come out with a perfect half sphere so there we are and let's think how we do this now. We have um, a, um, uh, a diameter of, uh, what do we have again? 40, uh, 40, 40 millimeters. So seven millimeters is our radius. And um, our thickness of our cylinder is two so we have to insert go in one millimeter something like this so let's try to move it six millimeter out six And let's have a look if the 10 millimeters are already enough. Let's compare it with the, with the image. Maybe. Let's make 11. Yeah, maybe this will work better. And now uh, I will move it a little bit more to the, a uh, little bit more up here. Or yeah, I think. Uh, how much? Uh, let's say 1.1. Like this, and now uh, rotate it so that it meets uh, the this angle of the outline. So, if we just just thinking, if we would have done this with the um, extrusion tool and would have inserted a tapering angle, then we already know the angle, how much we have to rotate it now. 
let's see if we can um, inspect it. Is here somewhere an angle? Mm, no. Uh, so we have to eyeball it. Okay. We go to the right view and take our cylinder here and then rotate it. Um, yeah, I try to rotate it uh, and then um, align it by hand. I think this is easier. Um, something like this here yeah okay how and, and now we have to duplicate it yeah how many could this be uh one two three four mm. two three four ah come on uh, we will also uh, just try this out uh, in Fusion. How many can we create here? So we create a pattern, a circular pattern, and choose uh, type bodies. And the object is our cylinder here, and the axis will be the 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 uh, z axis. So uh, we can see three copies, and now we increase the copies. I think eight sounds right. Uh, let's compare the image. Ah, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, much way more than eight. Well, let's have a look how this uh, will look uh, when we combine them. So 10. And now mm, combination. This is our target and the tool bodies. Zip, 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 zip. And we make a cut. Yes, we keep the tools. Now we have to deactivate them all by one. There we are. And I think not too bad, huh? You are. Ah, uh, let's have a look at the chat. Indian Aviator, 12. Tibor, 12. 4 by 3. Oh, okay. 12 how much uh, how many have i done 10 okay then i think we have to i believe you i believe you we will um use 10 then but uh, uh 12 but with 12 can we still use uh, the size of the cylinder we now have um what have we done two millimeters i think or what have we used? Uh, two millimeters. Oh, oh, I have an idea. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit smaller. Or we can uh, bring it more out. Then uh, the cutout also gets smaller. Um, let's modify first of all the combination here and edit these new tools here okay. hmm, I have I said also there oh, there we are so now we have 12 um, let's first try to move it a little bit more out and I think this was this moving here we have done at the right 
Let's just move it a little bit more out here so the groove gets smaller. I think we have to move it more out. Again, to the right. I think this... Is it affecting the, uh, the size? Let's just make a test here and move it out completely. Then there shouldn't be any grooves. Yeah, okay, it's affecting this. Okay. So just a tiny groove in there. I think, oh yeah. How is that? I think this is way better. Small, small grooves and 12. Yeah. So let's make some more roundings here. This is really work. So uh, these. So this is really um, a good feature here, uh, what you have seen um, the last minutes here, that you can always go into a work uh, step that you have done before and modify it. You have seen down here in the timeline, I activated again the move. Um, uh, yeah, the, this move action I have done and edited it. And uh, this can only be done, just make this um, rounding finish here, uh, let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.3, yeah, better. Okay, and this editing of uh, previous steps can only be done when you have activated up here in your, um, yeah, what is it, your uh, root here, um, that the design history is captured. So uh, as a default, it is uh, captured, but you can uh, also say do not capture design history. And then uh, you wouldn't be able to go back and edit a previous step. Yeah, so here we are. Yo, I think this is good. And now let's uh, think on which type of hardware this will sit. Um, I, it looks like a potentiometer here. Hmm. Um, a potentiometer um, that is uh, used here and I think I don't have a potentiometer lying around here um, I just attempt that it also has a five millimeter shaft if not you know we can edit this later uh, or modify it here uh, again using the hole tool Ah, come on, this time we will do this with a sketch. On the bottom, a circle of 6.2 millimeters, a little bit clearance again for the shaft. There we are. And finish the sketch and then using the extrude tool. How much? think yeah 10 10 millimeters let's do 10 millimeters and make a cut there we are and now we will have to place the set screws again again i'm using these uh uh three millimeter set screws I'm thinking if I only use one in this button. 
I know uh, that I have said um, before, two set screws are better um, because the fitting is better on the shaft, but a potentiometer um, doesn't need very much uh, force to turn. And so I think the risk that uh, this knob will uh, slide through is uh, really low. Let's, let's try one. Uh, again, we do this with uh, using a cylinder for as a cutting tool. So create a cylinder on the uh, X, uh, or it's not really important. Uh, let's use this Y, um, Z, uh, Z plane. And again, 2.5 millimeters is my hole size. And out here. And no cutting for the moment, uh, just a new body. Uh, to keep the overview, because you see, we have already many, many bodies here. Uh, let's name it here. Um, knob and this here uh, set screw so we try to keep an overview of what we have done here here yeah. and you can see um, the set screw would now sit here inside of this groove if we would now raise it up here and this we don't want to have I would like to have it between these here, but I want to do this as exact as possible. And so we have to calculate now the rotation that we need. Uh, so what did you say? We have, you said we uh, should use 12 um, grooves here. So 360, the, oh, the, the calculator. Standard calculator 360 divided by 12. We have 30 degrees between each. So um, 15 would be the middle. So let's turn this set screw here. And the center, I think, is it already? Axis is the Z axis. So, yeah, and minus 15. Yeah, perfect. And now raise it. Up, 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 up. I think four millimeters. Yeah, there. And now we combine these. Target body is our knob. Tool is this set screw cylinder. Let's keep this tool. And there we have the ugly hole inside. Let's now do a little bit of fillet. Point two, point five. Yeah. There we are. Finished. Save it. Nub, uh, how do we name this? What is this? The weather radar? Weather gain. Weather gain. Nope. Saved. Yeah, cool. So, uh, should we do another another knob, or are you tired now? So, um, if we 
would do another knob, then uh, I would uh, do this, um, yeah, this weather knob here, uh, or or this um, uh, trans uh, transponder knob here. What uh, what do you want? Uh, we make we make a poll. Come on. Let's try this out. Um, so, which knob to model? Uh, can, can I get rid of this? Which knob to model? Um, weather or transponder? Ah, Okay. So I'm not. Uh, I haven't used these um, these uh, polls very often, so I don't know uh, how to get rid of this yes or no um, question. So let's have a look. Who wants to have the weather knob up here, and who wants to have this uh, transponder knob down here? Or you can just click no if you want to say <laughs> I should go away. Um, yeah, this this knob re it's, uh, yeah really similar to this knob. I think when I have a look at this, and we just have to add this ring around here. This knob, uh, yeah, also not too difficult. I, I hope. Um, the length would be interesting here. We have to, we would have to eyeball it and compare it to um, the measurements of a of a panel. So, what says uh, the poll? Sixty-seven percent for the transponder. And I think this, uh, yeah, this will meet uh, the the need of the community. Okay, let's let's stop the poll and go to the um, transponder knob here. Oh, let's have a look, a near look. Yeah, you can see this. I hope. Um, here, which length is this? I think it fits between these here. Uh, this panel has a height. Uh, what have I said? I have my drawings here. 55 millimeters is the height of this panel. Would you say five of these knobs uh, over each other? Yeah, I think, huh? So uh, 11 millimeters. Just thinking of lengths, yeah. And the width uh, here in this direction is a little bit smaller, so maybe 11 in this direction and seven in this. We'll we'll try this out. So a new file, and we start again. I think this time. Uh, with a sketch. So how can we make this? Um, let's start with a circle. Seven millimeters, seven millimeter circle. And from this circle, we will add a uh, is it called tangential? I don't know the English uh, t tang tangent tangent lines here. Um, yeah. And how can we do this? Uh, let's uh, make guidelines. So construction lines um, to uh, get the right um, distance. So one here and one here and these lines are 11 millimeters 
away from each other. So and now back to normal lines. Uh, here, here we have to place uh, the start of this line. It doesn't snap here. Why doesn't it snap? Grid snap. Hmm. Also, these are the grid settings. Um, set increments, snap to grid, yeah. Okay. Hmm. But it doesn't snap. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Aviator. I I think two uh, eleven looks small, but um, I think it looks small because uh, seven is too big. I think. Oh, how can I snap it here to the to the y axis? So here you can see when you want to have a tangent line, then you just have to slide over the circle here, and then there you can see it. It's it snaps here. Just trying out something here, uh, making um, another guideline. doesn't snap to the right okay maybe it can I wish to try it again does it snap to yes to this point it snaps no not another construction line so now we have it and there it is tangent and here Maybe seven is a little bit too big. Let's try six. Okay, now it um, ruins our line completely. Okay. So we'll get rid of these lines. Let's say six. Okay. And again. No, where is it? There it is. There. You could also um, only model the left side here uh, and then mirror it. So th I think this could be more efficient. And I think I will do this. This would be much more uh, efficient. Hey, Captain Ausbaus, uh, we are doing the is it the transponder knob? Is it called? Uh, and yes, <laughs> another thing. Yeah, uh, the hole alone will need six millimeters. So <laughs> I think we can't use six millimeters here. Um, yeah, that's right. Good uh, that. Uh, you think of this uh, now in in this phase and not uh, when we are finished okay um let's have a look um this will be which type of um hardware behind uh, i think Ooh, a 12 yeah a 12 position rotary switch yeah and for these we will need uh, a six millimeter hole okay you could um, do crazy things and send down uh, the the shaft. Uh, could be a solution. Okay, but just but just make it bigger. So uh, really a really thin wall around. Let's say six millimeter is our shaft, and so. 
two millimeters more around this makes four then then we have to do a 10 millimeter oh yes this can can work 10 millimeters uh, because i remember now here these screws here i have all also uh, made 10 millimeters big and i think when you compare this cutout here to the the knob here then it really meets um yeah so let's get uh, so let's work with 10 millimeters and um use the mirroring so that we not uh, have to um yeah model both sides uh, all the time yeah so um and then 11 millimeters is uh too small of course yeah how how much can we use a 15 not no no more 18 let's try 18 18 17 So uh, we make a construction line again here. Twenty Indian aviator says twenty. <sighs> yes, do you think? Okay. <laughs> Come on. Use twenty. If it isn't looking good. And I come back to you. So here, uh, ah, I have to set uh, 20, 20, and now. Ah, yeah, okay, let's compare it. Right here we have the 20. Not too. really don't know let's come here uh, come here um yes let's let's try with a 20 for now let's just try it okay and now uh, we cut this away uh, make another construction line down here Whoop. and cut this away so now we have a ha perfect half of this and now we make the mirroring of this line and this line and the mirror line we can use our construction line here finished there we are finish the sketch and now we can extrude it but how much should we extrude it Poof. it's a bad angle to to say this here i think it is not as high as the um, weather gain knob uh, we have uh, I have modeled um, before uh, and this was 13 let's let's try 10 10 millimeters 10 11 something something like this uh, there let's try 11 there we are add now some fillets here this should be a big fillet no not 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 a millimeter a little bit less 
something like this. Point eight. So and another fillet down here, our classical bottom fillet of 0.2 millimeters and also a top fillet maybe 0.3 not too much there we are so not not too fast here before you get sick yeah 10 millimeters i think is Better here for the extrusion. Let's try 10. Yeah, better. Okay. And now we need this little top here. And I, I it's really long time ago since I really flown a, a 737 in the simulator. Um, I think in the Boeing, this is also a a test the test knob to test the um, uh, TCAS uh, functionality I think um, so I don't know if I uh, install this functionality because if it is there um, yeah press uh, right um, because if it is there uh, then it becomes really complicated because then there should be there should be a, a separate um, button in there and when you press on it uh, something has to happen and there should be then another shaft inside the shaft of the 12 uh, position rotary switch uh, which ends on a push button this can be really hard not impossible but really hard um, we will not make the decision today um, i have to think a little bit about it maybe try out uh, to drill through a 12 position rotary switch and if it works then maybe uh, i can come out with a design with a push button functionality So not, not today. Today we will only model this and we will make this uh, with a sketch. Again, a sketch on the top here. So, and we will use again a circle here. And so how, how big can this circle be here? Seven looks good and now we will uh, finish this sketch yes. it says eight millimeters <laughs> yeah come on eight millimeters now this is True audience interactivity. And raise it. No, not by two. Huh? Um, one looks better. We will join this. Yeah. And a fillet on top. Huh? I think even a millimeter looks looks very much. Yeah. Let's um, edit this extrusion. Point five is uh, let's make it a little bit more let's say 0.7 yeah I, I think this is not too bad here um 
let's try some color here or RAL color there we are huh not too bad yeah and uh, the hole for the shaft again uh, with a sketch on the bottom 6.2 millimeters there we are finish the sketch and an extrusion mm. minus eight there we are and now we need a set screw where is i i think here you can see it in the back the set screw oh <laughs> this is looking ugly <laughs> okay yeah but otherwise uh, if you want the set screw to be completely in there you have to insert it from here oh. Uh, or you you can send the length of the set screw down uh, i i won't let it stick out so ugly i think um so again you know this already i think huh? a cylinder on this plane here 0.5 millimeters and out there keep it as a new body for the moment and then move it up move it up i think three millimeters yes yeah okay everything is good and then combine target is our knob tool is our cylinder Bam, ready. And a little bit of fillet here. I think uh, I have read that chamfering uh, is better for 3D printers than uh, fillet. Um, I just remember now when I want to do this here. Let's try a, a really small a chamfer. More chamfer. It's uh, why do I do this chamfering? It's more easy to insert the set screw or um, the thread cutting tool later than here. Here, there it is. Save. Um, uh, transponder. Wow, this was fast. Cool. Yeah, guys, what? Uh, let's recreate what uh, I have done here now. Uh, we have done our um, transponder knob here. We have done the weather gain knob without color, but we will correct this there it is and we have done the door knob so three knobs one evening and the printer is waiting to print the first uh, prototypes or maybe the final version already uh, so Tibor what do you say for metric it's better than chamfer oh and if you are in in inches then uh, fill it is better uh, okay or, or what what do you mean here oh uh, when i see this here uh, we can use uh, the chamfering here too there and there point uh, one five Perfect. 
Yes. Ja, puh. Two hours. Okay. Don't let this uh, be too long. I think uh, you have now um, learned, if you didn't knew this already, um, some some techniques to make these knobs. We have um, placed um, canvases uh, and modeled uh, canvas orientated, I could say. Um, or um, you can, or we have seen uh, using different uh, sketches and made these, uh, how is it called, a loft between them uh, to create the starting body of our knobs. Yeah, and you have seen how I do uh, shaft holes, set screw holes, and so on. Or, ah, for wind. Okay. Yeah, and I hope um, you have learned something from me, or or have uh, seen that the techniques you are using are way better than than mine. And uh, now you know for sure that you would stay stick to your. Um, Methods. I hope I could uh, show you uh, something new. Yeah, and don't forget my upcoming live streams um, when I try out the the overhead for the first time. I don't know when it will be. Maybe uh, next or uh, the week after. Then we will fire up the whole overhead here for the first time. So any any more questions now? I just uh, don't want to uh, throw you out here. Um, how you make an STL file? Ah, Dennis Lander, yeah. Um, an STL file, yeah. Uh, I don't make STL files, um, really, uh, f for 3D printing. Um, also, also, I have read um, that STL files um, are not as good as 3MF files. I can show you when you want to um, use it in your printer. Uh, then you go here to utilities and make. And uh, Fusion with a, now uh, some, some updates ago, it already has switched the default format value to 3MF. You can see here the 3MF, and this is the format that you should use. Um, I don't know exactly technically why, um, but I am remembering that STL files uh, are a set of triangles, many triangles um, that build uh, the model you have done here. and this can be can be very much information and unnecessary big files and uh, for some uh, 3d printing programs um, very difficult uh, to come out with good results uh, from an stl file and in a 3mf file there the way the informations how your model is made uh, are different just my um uh, amateur uh, knowledge, uh, something like this. So um, when you export it, use 3MF files. Crazy hint the hot hello. Have, nice to have you here. You already missed most of it, but um, I think you can, you can uh, watch the replay then. Yeah, a 3MF file. So this is uh, how I export it. Um, just uh, select the model and say okay we can do this here for this um i will save it directly where i later will need it and where is it 3d knobs there we have it um now come on here let's say door yeah and then make a test importing it to the prusa slicer 
there we are oops no and insert it um where we have it cockpit 3d knobs and door there we are you can see no problem importing 3mf files yeah there it is yeah that's the way um otherwise for 2d drawings i'm using dxf files um just uh if you want to know this too uh, let's open let's open one panel for example uh, where we have it here pedestal this is the pedal uh, the pedal the panel uh, which we have done in the panel making live stream there we are and when i here want to uh, export a dxf file um, which i'm using for my cnc or the laser cutter then i'm doing it from a sketch and for example when i want to export this top acrylic sheet here then i go to top and here i have the the sketch which um, uh, defines my um, panel the top panel segment here and then you make a right click and say save as dxf and then you come out with a dxf file that you can use in your laser cutter uh, or cnc for example yeah so dxf yeah all right dxf yeah um, and you have asked for stl okay sorry i um missed this yeah but now you already know how you can export in dxf file if you want to know this it's for free the knowledge <laughs> okay so many file uh file formats too many too many for me okay so i don't think there are any more questions now yeah transponder weather gain up oh wonderful okay this has worked good i think when you are um joining me and and pushing me i think i'm i'm modeling faster Otherwise, this would have taken a week until all these knobs would have been finished. Okay, I just need pressure. So, again, thanks again to you all for uh, joining this live stream. I hope you will join the next one where I will fire up my whole overhead panel for the first time. And I don't uh, hope this uh, will be really on fire because i'm dealing here with electronics i hope everything will work fine and we can make a good test run of the overhead yeah good night to you all uh yeah have a good good week and good uh, projects for your own and i hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck. <laughs>